Hi, I'm Rob Perella. Welcome to my World of Lawn Bowls. In this video, I will show you the basic techniques and a simple way to play the game of lawn bowls. This is a bowling green, where I spend many enjoyable hours. In Australia, we are very fortunate to have some of the best greens available in the world. This is mainly due to our dedicated and professional greenkeepers, but also because of our wonderful weather. Each bowling green is approximately 120 feet or 36 meters square, and it's surrounded by a ditch and a bank to stop any bowls from going any further. The green is divided into seven rings, each ring is approximately 17 feet or five and a half meters wide. The ring's boundary is marked by two pegs on the bank. Each ring is numbered and marked by a center line. Okay, this is the tools of the trade. Firstly, this is not a ball. In the bowl's world, it's called the bowl. Bowl is made with a bias. It turns when it slows down. Secondly, we've got this little white ball, and it's called the jack. Some of us call it the kitty, or the kate, or the white. Lastly, we have a mat. It's a starting point of any match. These are the basic things we need to play the game of bowls. Okay, of course we need a set of bowls, and they do come in a set of four, but before you purchase them, just check with your club and borrow a set. You need a bowling shoe, and you can buy them in white or tan, and of course it's got to have a flat bottom, and uh, you can, should be able to buy them in any shoe store. The standard dress for the game of bowls is, as I am wearing, a hat, a shirt, and pants in either white or cream. The lady's clothing is similar. A hat, then a choice of two-piece suit as Annie's wearing, or a frock, a slack suit, or now you may even wear a clots. The regulation length of the skirt is three inches or 75 millimeters below the crease of the knee. Shoes must be flat sole in either white or tan but ladies clothing can only be in white. We also need polish for the bowls, so you can have a bit of grip. And the cloth, give the bowls a bit of a rub, and of course the cloth to just take the bit of polish off and make them nice and shiny. So. When you go in bowl, it feels good in your hand and doesn't slip. In a game of bowls, you also need a tape measure. And there's lots of tape measures around, and this is one of them. It's just to determine which bowl is closer to the jack. You've got to be very careful not to touch the jack. And you go from the centre of the jack to the closest point of the bowl. And there is the closest point of the bowl right here. And when you're sure about that measure, you change it to the other bowl. Make sure you don't push the jack too far away. Just touch it, that's it. Okay, doesn't reach here. So that's got to be the shot. Let's revise the main points of this section, the play area. Each green is 120 feet or 36 meters square. It is surrounded by a ditch and a bank. And it's divided into seven rings. Each ring is 17 feet or five and a half meters wide. Its boundary is marked by pegs of the bank. In terminology, uh, the bowl is the principal element of the game. It has a bias that makes it roll in a curve. The jack is a small white ball. It's also called a kitty, the white, or the kate. The mat is used to play a shot from. 
and is placed on the centre line. The equipment, you will need a set of four bowls, which you can borrow from the bowls club, flat sole shoes in either white or tan, a hat, white cream clothing for the men, only white clothes for the ladies. Even minor jewellery can be worn, a cloth, polish and a measure. In this section, I'm just going to show you how to pick the right size bowl for your hand. So your second finger, you know, in the middle of the bowl, like that, touching, and you bring your thumbs, same up the top, middle of the bowl. If they get very close, that means that is your size of your bowl. And if it gets apart like that, it's, the bowl is too big for your hand. And of course, the other way, the bowl will be too small for your hand. So this is the right bowl, right size for me, as you can see. Now that we pick the size of the bowl, we'll have to pick the weight of the bowl. Wherever greens you're playing on, if you're playing on a faster green, I advise you to have heavier bowls, because heavier bowl would stand into the wind too, and of course, with faster greens and heavier bowl, you'll find it a lot easier to play than a standard bowl because the wind does make it run on more and if you're playing on a slower green you need the standard bowl. Faster green the heavy bowl, slower green the standard bowl. Most clubs have sets of bowls that you can try. When you pick up the bowl it's got a larger circle on one side and a smaller circle on the other side and that indicates the bias. The smaller circle is where the bowl turns. So it's always got to be in the inside. The bowl will always turn in towards the bias mark, the smaller circle, as you see in this drawing. The bias makes the bowl turn in. You should always have the bias to the centre line. Bowling with the bias the wrong way will not only result in a wasted shot, but is also very embarrassing. To begin a match, you toss up a coin. And the winner of the toss has the choice of laying the mat, rolling the jack, and rolling its first bowl, or giving all that away. Now that we have tossed, and I've won the mat, we've got to place the mat six foot from the ditch and on the centre line because it's the first end. The mat is the starting point of any end. You place your feet on the mat to roll the jack, then roll the bowl. After the first end, you can place the mat anywhere along the centre line as long as the front of the mat and the front of the jack is no less than 70 feet or 21.4 meters. Let's revise the main points from this section. Picking your bowl. The correct size bowl that you will need depends on your hand span around the bowl. Where you play determines the weight of the bowl you will need. Fast greens heavyweight bowls, slow greens, standard bowls. The bias, now the bowl will always turn in towards the bias. The bias should be towards the centre line. Now the toss. To begin a match, a coin is tossed. The winner has the right to place the mat and roll the jack, or give all this to his opponent. The mat. Now the mat must be placed two metres or six feet from the ditch and on the centre line for the first end. After that, for all other ends, it can be placed anywhere along the centre line 
as long as it is no closer than 70 feet or 21.4 meters from the jack. Now that we're ready to start the game, I like wearing my sunglasses to cut the glare. Okay, this is the easy part, holding of the jack. You hold your four fingers together like that, and you put your jack right amongst them, and the thumb on top of it. Don't squeeze it too hard, otherwise you won't be able to roll it. Now we come up to rolling of the jack. Rolling of the jack, you step on the, with the right foot, on the left side of the centre line, so when your arm goes straight up the centre line when you deliver the jack. Okay, I'm holding it right, like I explained before, with a thumb on top, and I'm sure this jack is going to go straight up the centre line. Thanks, Clary. In a singles game, as you just saw, we need a marker to centre the jack and to keep a scorecard and a scoreboard. Okay, rolling of the jack. It's so important to roll the jack at the right place because that's the start of the game. And if you roll the jack incorrectly, out of bounds or into the ditch or too short, which the shortest is 21.4 metres or 70 feet, the opposition's got the right to change the mat position and roll the jack. And then, of course, you still got to roll the first bowl yourself. Now that we have rolled the jack correctly, let's look at the three most common grips in lawn bowls. First of all, the fingertip grip. Put the bowl on your fingertips with thumb in the middle of the bowl, like this. You can see how much gap you have in your palm. This grip is used on fast greens. We well, don't want to put very much weight behind the bowl. Secondly, the claw grip. Put the bowl closer in your palm and the thumb just where the rings are on the bowl. You will have less a gap in the palm of your hand. The third grip is the palm grip. Open your hand up and place the bowl in your palm. Let your thumb rest wherever is comfortable. Your middle finger should be along the middle of the bowl, facing straight up your arm. You should have no gap at all in the palm of your hand. The grip I prefer is the grip in between the lot, which is called a semi-claw grip. I place the bowl in my hand, as before, with the middle finger in the middle of the bowl and the thumb wherever it rests. It is very important that the middle finger is in the centre of the bowl because the bowl will roll off the middle finger. That is my grip. And you will notice there is only a very small gap in the palm of my hand. It is not the palm grip, not a claw grip, or a fingertip grip. It is my own grip, which I find comfortable to bowl with. Now let's look at the forehand draw shot. First of all, you must stand on the mat correctly. I start from behind the mat. I walk onto the mat with the right foot facing the line and put your left foot wherever it feels comfortable. Close or apart, it doesn't really matter, as long as you feel balanced. This is how I feel comfortable, so this is my stance for the forehand draw shot. Now I take aim on a point on the bank. This point must be to the right of where I want the bowl to end up. This is due to the bias, which will cause the bowl to turn in towards the centre line. This can be seen clearly in this drawing. With the bias mark on the left, the bowl will turn in towards the centre line. The foot fault is a common error in delivery 
If you put your foot too far in front of the mat, when delivering a bowel, you will foot fault. If you do this more than once, your bowel will be disqualified by an umpire. So try to keep your foot inside the mat as much as possible. With one foot on or above the mat on your delivery. You can also foot fault on the side of the mat. Half your foot is off the mat and the same on the other side of the mat. They are both foot faults. You will be penalised if you do it more than once. Now the backhand draw. The same procedures. You put your right foot first towards the aiming point. With your left foot beside your right, wherever it feels comfortable. The backhand draw is across your body. Always with the boys facing the centre line. Pick your aiming point on the bank. Look at that line and then determine the weight you will need to reach the jack. Weight is the amount of force you give the bowl on delivery. Again, your aiming point is away from the centre line. This time, your bias will be towards the right and your aiming point over to the left. In this drawing, you can see the aiming point and the curved path of the bowl due to its bias. Because the bowl has a bias, you don't try to aim directly at the jack when playing a draw. You find a point on the bank or green. It's not important where, as long as it gives the bowl the right path to the jack. This is your aiming line. When delivered, the bowl will start to turn about two thirds of the way up to the jack because of the bias. If your bowl ends wide of the jack, you will have to move your aiming point closer to the centre line so your next bowl will come closer to the jack. Same procedures if you finish too narrow. You then have to move your aiming point a little bit wider of the centre line. If you're playing on fast greens, this is the delivery you would use. Your elevation should be closer to the ground. So as you go down, your back swing will become shorter and so will your forward swing, stopping you from delivering your bowl too quickly. In other words, slowing down your movements. However, if the greens are slow, your elevation needs to be higher. Your back swing will be longer and so will your forward swing. You will get more power into the bowl to reach the jack. Weight control is the force you put behind the bowl. You add or subtract weight for force. Just as in any other sport, you need to get the right feeling behind the bowl to find the right weight to the jack. Let's revise the main points from this section. Rolling the jack. The jack must be rolled at least 70 feet or 21.4 meters, but not in the ditch or outside the boundaries. Otherwise, the opposition will take control. Grip in the bowl. Fingertip grip for fast greens. Claw grip for slow greens. Palm grip is the natural grip for most deliveries. Draw in the bowl. Forehand draw goes around the right of the centre line. Backhand draw around the left. If, however, you are left-handed, everything will be opposite. Foot faults. Whenever you end up with your foot off the mat, more than once, you will be penalised. Aim in line. You always aim away from the jack to compensate for the bias of the bowl. Elevation. Low elevation for fast greens. High elevation for slower greens. Weight control. This is the force you put behind the bowl when you deliver.
Let me tell you all the sorts of games we can play with these bowls. We've got four bowls. Of course, in singles, you use a whole four. And the maximum you can get in a one end is four shots. If you've got four bowls closer than the opposition, that means you have four shots. In pairs, you have four bowls each. And the lead plays his two bowls first. Then the skip comes down and plays his two. Then the lead comes down again and plays his other two bowls. And the skip comes at the end and plays his last two bowls. You play 21 ends, and whoever's got the high score after 21 ends will be determined the winner. Triples. Triples, you have three bowls each. The lead plays his three bowls. The second plays his three bowls. Then the skips come down and plays his three bowls. And you play 21 ends the same as the pairs. And after 21 ends, whoever's in front will be determined the winner. When we play fours, we play two bowls each. The lead goes first, then followed by the second, and the third, and then the skips goes last. And you play 21 ends, or 25, and whoever got the highest score after 21 ends or 25 will be determined the winner. Team duties. The lead. This is a person who places the mat, rolls the jack, and plays the first bowls. He also, as a courtesy, hands the jack and mat to the opposition when his team loses the previous end. The second, in triples, he measures and determines the shots at the head. In fours, he only keeps the card and every second end updates the scoreboard. The third position is only used in a game of fours. His duties are to measure and determine the shots at the head. Finally, the skip. He's the team captain and always plays last to have control of the game. His duties are the same for the pairs and triples and fours. He decides the length of the end by telling the lead where to place the mat and roll the jack. He normally stands at the distance he wants the jack rolled and also advises his team what shots to play. Now I'm going to show you how to fill in a card. Very simple. You put all your team's names in the front of it. And you turn the card around and you've got all the ends that you can play. So you, your a name of the skip goes on top and every end you play you fill in. And games of singles, of course, is played 25 up. And all other games, pairs, triples and fours, approximately 21 ends and to determine the winner. At the end of the game, the skip's duty is to check and sign the card. Now we're ready to play in the game. You can see where I'm standing on the left side of the mat, because I'm going to play backhand. I'm going to step on the mat with my right foot, exactly with the line I would like to place my right foot. My left foot will come next to it, nice and comfortable. And then you place your bowl on the right hand, or vice versa. If you're a left-hander, you place your bowl on the left hand. I'm a right-hander, I place the bowl on the, my right hand. Always make sure that bias, that little ring, always in the inside. So now that you've got the bowl in your hand, in your grip, ready? Now you look at the line again, and you look at the jack. Now you, you are focusing on weight, weight control. Now here it comes. That's, his, that's how you focus on weight control. You weigh your bowl right about here. When you're ready, you can take a few seconds on the mat. No one's pushing you. When you're ready to bowl, you let the bowl go. As far as I'm concerned, I'm ready right now. You deliver. Your head's got to stay still. Your head facing up. And of course, the back knee always on the ground. As you can see from this drawing, due to the position of the bowls at the head, the backhand draw was the best option available. 
So we play the bowl on the left hand side of the centre line because the best opening to the jack was on the left hand side. When any bowl touches the jack, it is marked by chalk. The bowl will always be in play, even in the ditch, but not if it goes out of bounds. When the jack goes in the ditch, a jack marker is placed on the bank to indicate its position. The yard on shot. The yard on shot means it's a yard through the jack and finishing off across the line about a yard behind the jack. Sit in the bowl or trail in the jack. So what you're doing is you step on the mat, the same procedure as the draw. The only thing is now the right foot as you saw, before I was there for the line of the draw, now I brought it in just uh, half an inch. And that makes a big difference at the head, that half an inch of that right foot. Because what's I've got to draw, trying to draw across the head with a yard of weight. And if you can get the weight right, the line is good because you step into it. You only got to find that weight for only a yard past the jack, which is very difficult. So you've got to really think about this shot. It's one of the hardest shots in the book. And I, that's why I've got to take a bit more time. Even if it takes more than a few seconds, now take plenty of time for this shot. I'm ready. If you step out right and deliver the bowl good with your hand up and your head straight, and the bowl will do the work. There are three possibilities when using the yard on shot, as seen in these drawings. The best result is to remove the opposition bowl and leave your bowl close to the jack. Another result, your bowl could trail the jack. And the last result, if you miss the bowl and the jack, you will have a bowl in position with a good chance of being counted as a shot while the end progresses. Now we're gonna show you the on shot. And the on shot is one of those percentage shots that you play in a head where you're situated like this one. You've got a bowl to rest on, jack, another bowl. So you've got three chances. So this is where you play the percentage shot. Okay, I'll step up the mat. The same as I did when I, I, I drew and play an on shot. Only this time, I'm gonna bring my right foot closer to the center line because I've got to take a little bit less grass and a little bit more weight. I'm going to play a bowl about 10 foot through the head. That means I've got to go past the jack about 10 feet, trying to sit the bowl, jack or other bowl. To do that, I've got to put an extra weight. To put the extra weight, I'm going to... The rhythm is going to be a little bit quicker to get my bowl up there quicker. I'll hold the bowl a little bit higher. Okay. This is the way it goes. Everything is quicker. Stay down. The head still. You've done everything right. You should get the result. As you can see, the bowl that I hit was pushed back seven or eight feet but my bowl stayed on the head. This is what we call a percentage shot. Due to the makeup of the head, the best option was to try and remove the opposition bowl or move the jack towards your own bowls. Now we're gonna show you the most awesome shot in the game, which is the drive. And you can use it as an attacking or in defense. In this case, it's an attacking shot. I'll try to remove those two bowls that are shots. Now I'm going to show you the stands for a drive. This is very important because everything is going to be on balance. It's very quick and I'm the best in business. Here we go. Now the right foot is straight for the bowl that I'm going for. It's just like shooting a bird. You've got to look for what you're going for. Okay, the left foot is on the off the mat as you can see but the balance is good everything is right now I place my bowl on my right hand because I'm right handed of course I've got to check the bias to see if I put the bar right put it in my hand 
and I'm holding the bowl, not too tight. And right in front of me, as you can see, I'm aiming at that bowl on the left side of the, of the jack. This is my position for a backhand drive. Now, I'm really starting how fast I've got to put this bowl down without going off balance. It's very important that the shoulders go forward, the head still, and everything, all the movements has got to go forward up the line. Now, I'll see if I can do it right and I'm sure that I will connect. As you can see, this was an attacking shot to remove the opposition bowls and leave your bowls to score shots. If I use the drive in defence, I'll be holding shots already and need to disrupt my opponent's position bowls, stopping them from moving the jack into the position bowls. You can also use the drive to kill an end. If all shots are against you and there is no other way to get shot, you could drive to destroy the end, that is, to put the jack out of the boundaries, not in the ditch, within the boundary pegs, because the jack will still be alive. Let's revise the last section. Types of games you can play. Singles, pairs, triples and fours. The team duties. The skip is the captain. The lead, second and third all have special duties. Types of play. We use the draw to get close to the jack. The yard on shot is used to rest the bowl, to trail the jack or a position bowl. The on shot is used to remove the opposition bowls or move the jack towards your own bowls. The drive, in attack, you remove the opposition bowls and in defence, to destroy the position bowls or at last resort, to kill an end. By now, you should have a basic understanding of the game of lawn bowls. There are a few other points that can help your game. You may notice that I am wearing a name badge. This is worn to help identify you to other bowlers. It is important to look like a bowler by maintaining your uniform and equipment. You look good, you will feel good and you will bowl well. If you want to become a champion, like any other sport, it's important that you start at early tender age. I began to play bowls when I was only eight. Even the great David Bryant and Mark McMahon started at the early age. Bowls is a game that anyone can play because it's not a contact or strenuous sport can play throughout your lifetime. I even played a game against a bowler who was 102 years old, believe you me. Handicapped people can also enjoy the sport and some have even represented their own country. Now that you want to play the game of bowls, I invite you to go to your local bowling club and talk to any member to help you get started. I'm sure they'll welcome you and they will have a spare set of bowls for you to try. All you need to take is a pair of flat sole shoes. Membership fees and the cost of the game is very inexpensive. To help you with your game, every club has an own coach provided free of charge. Most schools throughout Australia offer lawn bowls as a sport. Why not give it a go? As you have seen, the game of bowls is a very exciting sport. A little dedication 
and a lot of practice to lead you to something like this. I wish you luck.